We begin with breaking news tonight. San Diego police have released video of an officer involved shooting downtown last weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Chicato. The shooting shooting happened Sunday night after a man slipped out of his handcuffs in a patrol car and managed to get his hands on a weapon. News 8's Marcella Lee joins us now with more on the video. Marcella. Carlo and Barbara Lee, before we get to that video of the shooting, it's important to set the scene. Officers had just arrested the suspect at a hotel downtown after responding to a 911 call reporting the man was threatening to stab hotel employees. Police say they found meth in the man's pockets and five credit cards that didn't belong to him and took him into custody without incident. But things turned chaotic in the Sally Port at police headquarters, and that is what you are about to see. We do want to warn you that the video is graphic, and some may find it disturbing to watch. Let me see your hands. Hands. Let me see your hands right now. This body cam video released by San Diego police shows the 25 year old man with his hands free. Police say while waiting in the vehicle alone, he was able to slip out of his handcuffs, reach into the back of the vehicle and grab a backpack to get to an officer's backup handgun. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Watch your crossfire. You can hear officers trying to get him to drop the weapon. Bro, let me see your hands. Stop. We don't want to shoot you. Nobody wants to shoot you, bro. Let me see your hands. Let's back up. Let's back up. Officers back up, and moments later, the man fires out of the back of the vehicle. Police highlight the moment right here. From this angle, you hear it unfold. Everybody, hold your positions right now. Don't you move. They say the first shot is from the suspect, and then two officers fire back. Police say a few minutes later, the man reaches through the broken glass and actually opens the back door. You see that here from the surveillance camera in the Sally Port. He then walks to the front door trying to open that. Here's the body cam video. Show me your hands! Hey. Hey, get away from the vehicle! Police highlight the gun in the man's waistband. More shots are fired, and then a canine is brought in. Police say once the handgun is secure, officers immediately begin first aid until paramedics arrive. Police say his injuries are non-life-threatening. Police say the case will be turned over to the district attorney's office. They say internal affairs will also conduct an investigation, and the shooting review board and the community review board on police practices will also evaluate what happened with the FBI and the U.S. attorney's office monitoring the case. Back to you. All right, thanks, Marcella. Our other top story tonight, the president is publicly contradicting his own health agencies as he continues to push to get kids back into the classrooms this fall. Natalie Brand is at the White House where President Trump is also hosting the leader of Mexico. Mr. President, President Trump ignored questions as he headed to a working dinner with the president of Mexico after a day of meetings touting the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal. We've had a great relationship right from the beginning. The visit came as the president stepped up his push to reopen schools this fall, despite surging coronavirus cases in states across the country. We're safely reopening our country, and very importantly, we're safely reopening our schools. We want the schools to be open. The president even tweeted this threat, saying, may cut off funding if not open. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo emphasized it's a state and local decision when and where to reopen. Well, I won't give New York funding. You don't give us any funding now. The president also tweeted that he disagrees with his own CDC's suggestions for reopening schools, calling them very tough, expensive, and impractical. It's guidance. It's not requirements. The vice president said the CDC will issue new guidance next week to give more clarity on reopening schools because of the president's criticism. What is not the intent of CDC's guidelines is to be used as a rationale to keep schools closed. The presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden continued to bash the Trump administration's response to the pandemic. The guy who says I'm commander in chief and then doesn't command anything in this fight against the COVID-19. The president this week has touted a lower death rate from the pandemic, but Dr. Anthony Fauci called that a, quote, false narrative, urging Americans not to become complacent. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House.
As the president pushes for schools to reopen, Governor Gavin Newsom is pushing back, saying the choice needs to be a data-driven decision left to local districts. News 8's Heather Hope spoke with parents, students, and educators about the push to reopen. She has their reaction in this Learning Curve report. Yes, that decision weighing heavily on parents. Many still unsure about what's the best way to do education moving forward. We talked to Betty here at Kearney High School. Weigh in on this hot topic. I want to send my kids to school, definitely, because, I mean, being at home, it's a lot. Definitely have concerns, especially for the teachers and the kids in, in the classrooms. The president's push to reopen schools is causing some pushback. A little bit, you know, obviously, you know, you never know who's sick, who's not. Parents and students picking up food at Kearney High School express some fears and willingness to get kids back in the classroom. Sometimes I'm afraid what if something happened. And Mom Stephanie Martinez said she filled out yes on a district survey to get her 10th grader back in school, but now has second thoughts with an increase in cases. I'm not that this is happening, I'm re rethinking it. As for the president threatening to withhold funding for states who choose not to reopen schools come August, Governor Gavin Newsom had this to say. What we need to address is safely reopening the schools. Uh, and we need to make that a foundational principle. Uh, that to me is non-negotiable. The governor said the goal is to provide more PPE and support for educators. Protect our caregivers, our teachers, uh, to protect their support staff, janitors, the bus drivers, uh, and our children. We're probably one of the largest, not the largest, elementary school district in the state of California. Dr. Francisco Escobedo, the superintendent of the Chula Vista Elementary School District, says schools will reopen on August 31st with a five-stage plan for his over 30,000 students. We're getting ready. It's still a, a road ahead for us of awareness, messaging. The schools will have temperature checks, some staggered schedules, face masks, and hand-washing areas. We, we are hope that we can limit the class sizes, especially if we do some staggered starts as well. A recent San Diego Unified School District study shows nearly 60% of parents are willing to let their children go back to school inside a classroom, while just 30% support both online and in classroom education, with just 10% showing they want online education only. Barbara Lee and Carlo. All right, Heather, thank you. There has been hot debate over whether to send students back to school this fall, which brings us to our question of the day. Do you agree with the push to send students back to on-campus learning? Uh, the answer's there. Yes, I think it'll be okay. No, I, it won't be safe. Or I'm undecided. Right now, the no, it won't be safe uh, seem to be leading the pack. But you can log on to the News 8 app or cbs8.com slash vote to weigh in and uh, choose from one of those three choices. We'll have updates throughout the newscast. UC San Diego is working to keep international students enrolled here in the U.S. This week, ICE announced that students here on F1 and M1 visas who only take courses online will need to transfer schools or face deportation. UC San Diego says it is working to offer enough in-person and hybrid courses to meet the minimum requirement for international students to remain in the U.S. The university plans to have 30% of its courses in person in the fall, and the remaining 70% will be hybrid or remote. The number of coronavirus-related deaths in San Diego County surpassed 400 today. County leaders confirmed 264 new infections out of just over 7,600 tests. That's a positive rate of about 3%. The 14-day rolling average is now at 5.8%. The total number of coronavirus cases is now at 17,842. Seven new deaths brings that total to 406. News aides Brandon Lewis joins us now to take a look beyond the numbers. Carlo and Barbara Lee, California was one of three states that was called out by federal health authorities, the others being Florida and Texas, all had a relatively modest growth of coronavirus cases until about two weeks ago. And that's a scene that we are seeing play out here in San Diego. A long time of stability, but then this increase in the number of test positives and rapid increase in cases. California was called out by federal health authorities for the stark increase in coronavirus cases. The majority of the issue 
is in the Los Angeles area, although we see this through Riverside, Imperial, Sacramento, and now San Francisco with increased number of cases. San Diego is no exception. Cases are up more than 24% Monday to Monday, with cases growing faster in Carlsbad, Solana Beach, and Fallbrook. While the South Bay is home to the most cases, they're increasing at or below the county average. It's too soon to know if the new restrictions on bars and some indoor activities is having an impact since the virus can incubate for up to two weeks, but the median age of cases continued decreasing. Now at 39 years old, down from 46 two months ago, while the median age of deaths is unchanged at 78. Critics of policies point out the county is doing more testing, so cases will naturally rise. But we performed 15% more cases Monday to Monday, while cases rose 24%. The same goes for a week earlier, a 19% rise in testing, while cases rose 25%. The county says the average wait to get a test is now between five and seven days, so they are adding additional testing sites next week. The number of hospitalizations and ICU admissions has been relatively stable over the past week, but health officials continue to stress the importance of wearing face coverings and staying indoors and avoiding unnecessary activities. Carlo and Barbara Lee. Thank you, Brandon. Poway is getting ready for more restaurants to start serving customers outdoors. Last night, Poway City Council members approved the purchase of new picnic tables. They began to arrive today. These were delivered to Felipe's Pizza Grotto. The city's plan is to lease the tables to businesses. And once the state imposed indoor dining restrictions are over, the tables will be moved to local parks. Local researchers say they found a big breakthrough in the fight against cancer and autoimmune disease. That story is coming up. Plus, a look at a new seaweed species that is threatening tropical coral reefs. And the super sweet offer from Comic-Con 